Over the past year, a huge amount of attention has been paid to government snooping and the bulk collection and storage of vast amounts of raw data, all in the name of national security. What most of you don't know or are just beginning to realize is that a much greater and more immediate threat to your privacy is coming from thousands of companies you've never heard of in the name of commerce. They're called data brokers, and they're collecting, analyzing, and packaging some of our most sensitive personal information and selling it as a commodity to each other, to advertisers, even to the government, often without our direct knowledge. As we first reported in March, much of this is the kind of harmless consumer marketing that's been going on for decades. What's changed is the volume and nature of the data being mined from the internet and our mobile devices, and the growth of a multi-billion dollar industry that operates in the shadows with virtually no oversight. Companies and marketing firms have been gathering information about customers and potential customers for years, collecting names and addresses, tracking credit card purchases, and asking people to fill out questionnaires so they can offer discounts and send catalogs. But today, people are giving up more and more private information about themselves online, without knowing that it's being harvested and personalized and sold to lots of different people. Our likes and dislikes, our closest friends, our bad habits, even our daily movements, both on and offline. Federal Trade Commissioner Julie Brill says we've lost control of our most personal information. Are people putting this together and making dossiers? Absolutely. With names attached to it, with personal, personal identification? The dossiers are about individuals. That's the whole point of these dossiers. It is information that is individually identified to an individual or linked to an individual. Do you think most people know this information is being collected? I think most people have no idea that it's being collected and sold and that it's personally identifiable about them and that the information is in basically a profile of them. No one even knows how many companies there are trafficking our data but it's certainly in the thousands and would include research firms, all sorts of internet companies, advertisers, retailers, and trade associations. The largest data broker is Axiom, a marketing giant that brags it has on average 1,500 pieces of information on more than 200 million Americans. It's much harder for Americans to get information on Axiom. The company declined our request for an interview and is fairly vague on the methods it uses to collect information and who its customers are. It's not about what we know we're sharing. It's about what we don't know is being collected and sold about us. And Tim Sparapani says it's a lot. He's been following the data broker industry for years, first as a privacy lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union, then as Facebook's first director of public policy. He's currently advising tech companies and app makers. Sparapani thinks people would be stunned to learn the kind of information that's being gathered about them and that could end up in their profiles. Religion, ethnicity, political affiliations, usernames, income, and family medical history. That's just for openers. What about uh, medications? Certainly. You can buy uh, from any number of data brokers uh, by malady of the list of individuals in America who are afflicted with a particular disease or condition. Alcoholism. Y yes, absolutely. Depression. Certainly. Psychiatric problems. No question. History of genetic problems. Yes. Cancer, uh, heart disease, you name it, uh, down to the most rare and, and unexpected maladies. Sexual orientation. Of course. How do they determine that? Well, based on a series of other data points they've bought and sold. Uh, what clubs you may be frequenting, uh, what bars and restaurants you're making purchases at, uh, what other products you may be buying online. And all of this can end up in a file somewhere that's being sold maybe to a prospective employer. Yeah, not only can it, it is, Steve. With all this information and your name attached to yes, it. Yes, exactly. Sparapani says data brokers have been flying under the radar for years preferring that people know as little as possible about the industry and the information that's being collected and sold. But the evidence is there if you know where to look. We were able to go online and find all sorts of companies peddling sensitive, personalized information. A Connecticut data broker called Statlistics advertises lists of gay and lesbian adults and response solutions, people suffering from bipolar disorder. 
Paramount Lists operates out of this building in Erie, Pennsylvania, and offers lists of people with alcohol, sexual, and gambling addictions, and people desperate to get out of debt. A Chicago company, Exact Data, is brokering the names of people who have had a sexually transmitted disease, as well as lists of people who have purchased adult material and sex toys. No one has ever looked into these lists. In fact, most of this has been completely opaque until just recently. The depths of this industry, the, the really darkest corners, have yet to be exposed to any light whatsoever. Every piece of data about us now seems to be worth something to somebody. And lots more people are giving up information about people they do business with, from state departments of motor vehicles to pizza parlors. Most retailers are finding out that they have a, a secondary source of income, which is that the data about their customers is probably just about as valuable, maybe even more so, than the actual product or service that they're selling to the individual. So there's a whole new revenue stream that many uh, companies have found. That data becomes much more valuable when it's married to the personal information that's being volunteered on the Internet. Take Five Solutions, a data broker in Boca Raton, Florida, runs 17 websites like GoodParentingToday.com and T5HealthyLiving.com, where people can share stories about their families and health. What web visitors don't realize is that Take Five's real business is collecting and selling the information. There's all sorts of people coming on now. That's right. And there is also an invisible side to the Internet that most people have never seen. When you're online visiting websites, you may think you're alone, but you're not. As digital privacy expert Ashkan Sultani showed us using a software program called Disconnect, which was created by a former Google engineer. What's this stuff? So when you visit the New York Times homepage, there's a, a, a number of companies on the page that are essentially tracking your visits. When we clicked on NewYorkTimes.com, the software revealed the presence of more than a dozen third parties that the website had allowed in to observe our movements. These are all companies that either place ads or measure um, people's behaviors on that site. So as you're going through the web and doing your searching, You've got a whole crowd following you. That's right. There were ad networks and marketing and analytics companies measuring traffic and page views and cataloging our interests. And some of this information you think is going to go to data brokers? Definitely. Wow, look at that. We found the same thing going on at the 60 Minutes website. They are everywhere. So they're really inside your computer? They're inside your browser, usually, or your mobile device, yes. They're called and you haven't necessarily invited them in. You have not invited them in. And most uh, computers or browsers allow them in by default. Do companies collect your web browsing history? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is the primary piece of data collected online. As you click through the web and view car sites or read about the news, um, companies, these third parties, will collect your click stream as you click from site to site to site to see what you may be reading, what you may be interested in, um, what types of things you might buy. And almost all of it is for sale, especially any personal information that you might volunteer. The more companies know about us, they say, the more efficient they can make the advertising. You're looking at one of the commercial pillars of the Internet. Sultani took us to an online dating site called OKCupid, okay which asks visitors for all sorts of personal information. Are you vegetarian or vegan? Do you drink? What's your relationship with marijuana? And what people don't realize, that, so, you know, here you're seeing all the third parties that are present on this site, right? So we're seeing... So all these people are getting the information? They're getting some of this information. The website doesn't require users to give their real name, but the IP address and the computer ID number are recorded, and it's not difficult for data brokers to match that information with other online identifiers. There are firms that specialize in doing it. So you can combine this data with other data that's available and figure out who someone is. That's right. That's by right. name, by email. That's right. The only way you would have known that is by going to the legal section of OKCupid's website, presuming you could find it. Then you'd have to scroll through three pages of terms and conditions before finding the privacy policy, which says you should appreciate that all information submitted on the website might potentially be publicly accessible. <laughs> and if you were one of the billion people who have downloaded the popular game app Angry Birds to your smartphone, or you were one of the 50 million people who downloaded the brightest flashlight free app, you didn't realize that the companies that gave them to you for free were using the apps to track your every movement and passing it on to other companies.
Your smartphones are basically little mini tracking devices and, and it's collecting information about where you are traveling through the day as it's on in your pocket or in your purse. Federal Trade Commissioner Julie Brill says geolocation data on individuals has become a hot commodity. How sensitive is that information? It's the kind of information that really talks about who you are on a day-to-day -day basis, where you go, and who you might be visiting with, what shops you may frequent, um, what time you come home, what time you leave. Commissioner Brill is pushing for more oversight and transparency. She says people should be able to see the information the companies have on them, be able to challenge it if it's wrong, and opt out of the system altogether if they don't want personal data collected. Consumers don't know who the data brokers are. They don't know the names of these companies. They have no way to know, well, what, well, what website am I supposed to go to? Who do I call? What letter do I write? The Senate Commerce Committee and its chairman, Jay Rockefeller, have proposed legislation that would do just that. The committee has been investigating the industry for more than a year, and Senator Rockefeller says he's being stonewalled by three of its biggest players, Axiom, Epsilon, and Experian. I'm putting these three companies on notice today that I am not satisfied with their responses, and I'm considering further steps. Senator Rockefeller called companies like Epsilon the dark underside of American life. Yeah, that's an interesting phrase, one that I would take offense at. Brian Kennedy is chairman and CEO of Epsilon, which claims to have the world's largest cooperative database, including more than 8 billion consumer transactions combined with an extensive network of online sources. He doesn't like the term data broker and says Epsilon is a marketing firm that uses data. Can I go on your website and see everything you have about me? You can go on our website today and we offer a method by which we can show you the kind of information that we have about you. The kind of information? Right. Not all the information? What we've done is we've collected the data into categories, into the basic information that is meaningful and understandable to a consumer. Kennedy says Epsilon has provided the Senate Commerce Committee with binders full of information. He calls the hearings political theater. He sees no need for more oversight or regulation of one of the fastest growing sectors of the economy. If there are abuses out there, we don't believe those happen within our company, and we would be the first to raise our hand and say, if there are specific uses of data that are problematic, then the government should focus on those particular uses of data, not attempt to regulate the entire industry in a way that could cripple our economy. You're saying that, that any kind of regulation on this would, could cripple the economy? I am. And this should be left to industry groups to self-enforce? We think that self-regulation has been very effective. What we're hearing today is a lot of discussion in Washington. We're not hearing a lot of discussion, frankly, from consumers. It's one of the odd things. So consumers are rushing to the Internet to provide more information about themselves than you know, we would have ever imagined. That surprised you? It does surprise me. I, I don't do it myself. I'm a consumer like, like you are. So you think uh, it's imprudent? I think the consumers ought to understand that the Internet is an advertising medium. This is also the position of the Direct Marketing Association, which is one of the most powerful lobbying groups in Washington. Its members include Google and Facebook, the two companies that probably know more about us than anyone else. They were not mentioned in our story because they don't sell the information they gather about us. They keep it for themselves. For secrets that protect your privacy online, go to 60minutesovertime.com. Sponsored by Pfizer.